Today I'm going to show you how to get set up with OBS and how you can make it work best for your situation, whether that's gaming, just streaming with a webcam, or actually using your mirrorless camera. Here we go. Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. If you're into tech tutorial videos and reviews, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Today's video I'm going to show you how to set up OBS from scratch. I've just downloaded the installer and we're going to set up firstly a gaming setup and then we're going to talk also about how you can just use part of that particular setup to also work with a mirrorless camera or just with a webcam and microphone. It's a pretty powerful piece of software. I'm going to give you some pro tips about how to move things around and also how to crop certain parts of the images out and to make it look really pro. So here we go. First thing you want to do is download the installer, which I've already got on my desktop. I'm going to double click that and click install. And we're going to click next. Go through the setup process. Once we've installed the software from scratch, it says launch OBS. That's what we're going to do. This is version 25.0.8 as of May the 6th, 2020. Now, the first screen we see is, would you like to run the auto configuration wizard? We're going to click no on this because we basically want to set it up the way we want to run it. So click no and you're greeted with a blank screen. Now, the first thing that you need to do is change the aspect ratio of the base canvas. This is important because everyone will be using different size monitors, but you want to basically see and output a certain dimension, which will be HD for today's video. If you're going to be streaming in 4K, you can change it up to 4K. Most people will still be streaming in 1080p. So what we want to do, we want to go to file on the left, and then we're going to go down to settings. And we're going to go to video. And as you can see, my base canvas resolution is 1680 by 1050. We don't want that. We want 1920 by 1080, and we want the output scaled resolution the same as well. So that means everything that we see on screen will match up nicely. So 1920 by 1080. You can also change this value here to different frame rates, but I'm gonna leave it on 30 for the sake of this video. If you're in different region, regions like I am and you're just streaming a camera directly to the computer, whether it be a webcam or say something like a mirrorless camera, you can set this to the same frame rate of your camera. So you can select 25 frames per second PAL, or you can go up to 60 if you want to capture 60 frames per second gaming. But for the sake of this particular video, I'm going to leave it at 30 and click apply, and then we are good to go. Now, we have a black screen with not a whole lot going on. Now, the really cool thing about OBS is we can stack up as many layers as we like, which are called scenes, and then we can add as many different sources to each of those scenes. So we can have a microphone on one scene and a microphone not on the, on the next one. I'm going to show you how to set this up to make the most out of it. Now, this particular setup that I've got, I've got my Super Nintendo Mini. I've got an Elgato HD60. I've got a Blue Yeti microphone and a Logitech C920 webcam sitting on top of my monitor. Now, this is one of those setups that will work for pretty much any type of setup. And as we go through it, I'll show you what you need to do just to modify it depending on your particular situation. But this gaming setup is pretty common these days. There is one other solution as well, the A10 Mini or Mini Pro that has multiple HDMI devices. But for just getting going, if you've got the basic setup like this, you're gonna get some really great results and I'll show you that coming up. Now, if we take a look at OBS, we can absolutely resize this however we like just by dragging this around. Just for the sake of setting it up, I'm gonna make the actual preview window smaller and we're gonna set up our scenes and sources. Now, one of the really cool things, if you're thinking about going into streaming full time, you wanna set up titles. I'm gonna show you how to do that and also how to layer them up correctly as well. So, the first thing I wanna do is rename this one. I'm gonna call this one intro. It doesn't really matter what it is. I'm gonna show you how to get this set up right the first time. Now, over here on sources, we can pick any number of different things from images to videos to video capture devices, to audio capture devices, just about anything. For this first one, I'm gonna to go to media source. Now, what this will allow me to do is to select something that is on my desktop, which I've already pre-made, that will allow me to play this at any, any point in time. And this will be a really great way of making a title. So I've got one called Geeky Nerdy Techie, be right back, Geeky Nerdy Techie live stream intro. So I'm gonna select that one. I'm gonna click loop down here on the screen, and then we're going to click OK. And as you can see, there it is. That's the video that I had saved on my desktop. So you can make any title in terms of a video title, import it to the desktop that you wanna stream from, 
and then select it and it will just start playing. Now you can also see that the I've got on screen the mic is also responding right now. For this particular scene, I don't want my voice getting picked up with the Blue Yeti. So I'm gonna turn down the mic auxiliary so it's only playing the sound that comes with the actual uh, file that I've got playing. I'm just gonna turn that down a bit so it's not so loud. Bring that down to about there and we should be good to go. So this will just play until the end of time. So that's a really great way of just having a startup screen before the stream goes live. But now we wanna set up everything else. So let's do that. We go back to scenes and now we're gonna do the Elgato. Now it doesn't really matter what you call any of these scenes as long as they make sense to you. But one pro tip is you can't call the scene and the source the same thing. I don't know why, but you just can't do it. So we go down to video capture device and select, or, or call this one I should say, HD60. If you've got a 60S, it's the exact same process. Now, as you can see on screen here, it doesn't look right. My video is cropped and it's actually picked up my webcam instead. So we don't want that, we want the device to be the Elgato HD here. So there it is. Now we also wanna change the resolution to be on point with everything else that we've got going on. So we wanna change this to custom and select the resolution down to 1920 by 1080. If you wanna go in 720p, you can do that as well, but I don't find like most people will wanna do that. They'll wanna stream it. My mouse is giving me grief. They'll wanna stream at 1080p. It's kind of like the standard. So I don't actually have anything uh, going through the Elgato right now, so I'm gonna turn on my Super Nintendo Mini. It will just take a moment. As you can see, I've just turned the Super Nintendo on and the picture has come up in the Elgato, no problems at all. I'm gonna set up each of the devices separately and then we're gonna tweak some of the scenes. So here we go. Up next, we wanna do the webcam, same process again. Just call it whatever is familiar to you, webcam. Then we're gonna to go to sources and select video capture device again. We'll call this one Logitech, and there it is, that's the webcam. So what we wanna do with this one, we can set the uh, resolution here to the same as well. So we wanna to go to custom, and then we're gonna to go to 1920 by 1080. And I've got it set to match output frames per second. So it's gonna basically accommodate and work in the best way that I've got everything else already tailored within OBS, if that makes sense. So we selected that earlier. So I've just let it select its own thing. And as you can see on screen, there I am. Let me show you how cool this actually is. So we've got the scene set up. So number one is the intro, and that's just that video on perpetual loop. Then we have the Elgato, which is the gaming footage in full screen. And then we have my webcam, which is also in full screen. But we wanna have my webcam and the gaming footage together on the same screen. So how do we do that? We're gonna click the plus again, and for this one, I'm just gonna call it gaming full because that makes sense to me. I know what I'm trying to look for. And then we're gonna also select the sources again. So we're gonna to go to video capture device. We're gonna to go to add existing. If you don't do add existing, it's not gonna work properly. So just make sure you have HD 60 there and you click that and there's one. And in this same scene, which is the gaming full, we're now gonna select the webcam. So we do the same thing again, video capture device, add existing, go to Logitech and boom. Now you might notice that the webcam is actually filling up all of the screen and covering that of the gaming footage. Now we can essentially move these around if you've done it in reverse order, just by dragging and dropping. Whatever is on top is the thing that's shown before or above the layer under it, kind of like how Photoshop works. But the easy thing with the OBS software is I can click on the top layer and use the points at the end just to drag it to any size that I like. And I like it about that size somewhere around there. Now, you might say, oh, it kind of sucks because there's so much room around me in the shot. I only I want to be able to crop that image in and you can easily do that. So if you click on the webcam again and hold down Alt on the keyboard, and while you hold down Alt, you left click and you move these points you can crop the image even further. I kind of like that Pac-Man thing there, but anyway, for right now, we're just gonna do this. We're gonna move that across just by releasing Alt, and there I am in the corner. Now you might be asking, all right, the webcam's moved, but how do I move the gaming footage to make it look better? It's nice and simple. So you can either click on the HD60 down the bottom or click on the scene itself just in the preview window. Hold Alt again, 
and it will start to crop that scene as well. Release Alt and click on it again, or click off it, then click on it, and you can move this to wherever you like. So you can move this across, and now I can actually reposition or make my picture-in-picture -picture a little bit bigger. Now this is obviously a square aspect ratio game. If you're using a widescreen one like from an Xbox, it's exactly the same process. Just move things around so it works for you. There's one thing I need to mention that due to latency with any HDMI device, it's usually almost what feels like half a second behind real time. It's not optimum to monitor your gaming via the actual computer screen. I set my computer up as a dedicated streaming box and I reference my gaming footage on another monitor. Now that I've got the gaming footage and the webcam roughly where I want it, I've just cropped in on the sides of the gaming footage a little bit more to make it a bit more uniform. I wanna add a background image. So what we can do, we can go to the plus sign down the bottom and then we're going to scroll up to image. There it is. And I've got one already stored on my computer. I just got it off Google Images and it's called, I don't even know what it's called, but it's just a Super Nintendo one that I Google searched and there it is. So this will now be behind everything. At the moment, it's in front of everything, which we don't want. We want to put it behind. Then we want to drag it and make it fill up the entire scene. And there we go. We've got something that looks pretty professional already, nice and simply. Now, if we can go back to the webcam, we've got the webcam on screen. If we want just the gaming footage, we've got that. If we want to go back to the intro or set up a different scene that might be a timeout, you know, like if you have to use the bathroom or whatever, you can set up a different one that says back in a minute, right? So it's pretty powerful software like that. The gaming full one looks really cool, but there's still one thing missing, right? What about the microphone? <laughs> and the microphone is something that's absolutely essential. I'm gonna show you how to set that up properly and also how to get the right mix from your voice between that and the actual gaming audio as well. So we're gonna set this up. Now there's a few ways you can do it. This mic auxiliary one is usually the webcam or the web camera microphone, so we don't want that. On this actual webcam one here, we're gonna add the microphone that we wanna use. So we go to audio input capture. We can call this one Yeti. And then we're going to select the Yeti microphone. Boom. So as you can see on screen, the audio levels are now going up and down and I've just moved the Yeti closer to me. That's that microphone, as you can no doubt see on screen. So one of the cool things about this is anytime I go back to the webcam setting, I've got my audio from this as well as the webcam active. And we wanna also do this, the same thing again on the gaming full because we need to make sure they're all working. Now we wanna to go to audio capture or audio input capture. And then we wanna add existing and go to Yeti. And we wanna make the source visible and we are good to go. So now what we have on screen is the HD60 and you can see the audio coming from Ghouls and Ghosts. <laughs> And we can also see the audio coming up and down from the Yeti, but we wanna make this more balanced. One of the things a lot of people do that's, in my opinion, a little bit wrong is the gaming footage is, or the gaming audio is way too loud. So you wanna pull this down and put it down in the green. And then if you can, if you can adjust your microphone, make it go up to about minus five. That's about as loud as you'll need to go. You can push it a little bit further sometimes, but somewhere around there should be about even or you can actually reduce it even further if you want the gaming footage uh, or the gaming audio footage down lower in the mix. I keep saying footage, it's just the audio. So don't worry about that. It's not touching the footage, it's only touching the audio. What I've just shown you will basically cover almost any situation. If you've got an external sound card like a Focusrite, a Steinberg or a Behringer or any of these other sound cards, this setup will work in a number of different situations. You don't need a USB powered microphone to make this setup work. You can use something like a Focusrite, Behringer, or Steinberg in this particular situation and run a, a boom shotgun mic or whatever you choose to use, it will recognize it and you can set it up. The more complex your audio is, the more complex you're gonna have to make OBS to function. This is probably the easiest way to get everything working. But if you're not interested in gaming and you just want your webcam to work, this is basically all you'll need. You'll need the microphone and you'll need the webcam and OBS, which is free, nice and simple. And you can set an intro up if you want and then go back to the webcam. So you can do this no problems at all. Now, if you just wanna stream, say from a mirrorless camera through OBS and you don't own a Canon, some Canons can work as a webcam just plugged in. But if you don't have a Canon, like I've got Panasonic cameras, you plug the HDMI output of your camera into the Elgato HD60 
and then you can plug a microphone into your camera and that will be the easiest way to make it appear in OBS with the video and audio synced. Now there's one thing a lot of people don't mention, anytime you're recording to a computer through any HDMI device or any HDMI device in general, there's always sl a slight latency between what shows up on your screen and when it actually happens. So that means that sometimes the video from your webcam and the audio from your microphone, they'll be in sync with each other, but they might be slightly ahead of the HDMI signal. So you need to offset them slightly as well. Now that'll be a video for another day. I just want to show you the basics with this and also show you how to get it going. Now, there's one thing I want to show you as well. If you go up into file, this is how you actually stream to YouTube. So if you go to settings, and then you go to stream. You've got all these different services that you can choose from here. I'm gonna choose YouTube Gaming, and then I'm going to choose uh, basically the primary YouTube server, and then your stream key. Now to get your stream key, you can click Get Stream Key. It will take you to the YouTube dashboard. You'll scroll down and you'll get your streaming key. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want anyone using my streaming key, but that's how you get it. Now there's a couple of other settings you wanna be aware of as well. If you go to Output on the left, here we have the video bitrate, and then we also have the recording format. So if you're gonna be recording to your computer, change this MKV and make it MP4. It will just be a lot more efficient in editing if you're planning on editing it to use MP4 in my opinion. Now under this streaming tab here, we've got something that says video bitrate. This is basically how much data do you wanna send? That's the equivalent of 2.5 megabit or somewhere around there. Now, depending on your upload speed, you can go to speedtest.net. It's a free service that will not only check your download speed, but your upload speed. The higher you can set this, the better. If you've got a, a connection that's say 10 meg up, which I don't, you wanna set this to a safe level. I would just set it to five meg up, which is 5,000, somewhere around there. You can play with this and make sure you set it to a setting that works in terms of quality and also in terms of what your internet connection can handle. If you're in Australia, and you have really poor internet speeds like I do, I have to set this down a lot further. I set this to about 1000 and it still works, but it does look a little glitchy from time to time. But if you're just using a webcam, set this lower and you'll have no problems there at all. And now the recording format here, you can change it up and have uh, the recording quality to high quality is what I like to choose. Because then if you record as well as stream, you'll have a higher quality backup on your computer and then you'll be able to stream at whatever works for your particular internet speed. So this has been a mouthful of a video, odds are it's gonna be pretty long, but I wanted to put this video together because I know so many people right now are looking to stream with OBS. I've been using it for years. I've tried paid services like StreamYard. I keep coming back to this. If you're on your own or you've got someone over and you wanna make a video and stream it online, OBS is definitely the way to, to go. I've got the software that came with the Elgato. I still prefer OBS overall. I just think it's a much better solution for multitasking things in a number of different ways. So just remember to set up your scenes the best way that you can. And right now I'm gonna show you an example of how this looks. So let's play some games. All right, so this is how it all looks and this is a recording through OBS. So we're gonna give this a shot and what we've got going on right now is my gaming setup with Ghouls and Ghosts. And I'm gonna play this the way that I probably shouldn't. I'm looking at my actual computer monitor to play this, so I'm gonna be a second behind real time. It's really disorientating, but it is what it is. So we're just gonna skip through this. I love this game. Hopefully the audio signal and levels are all good as well. I guess I'll find that out a little bit later on. But if you if you don't own a Super Nintendo Mini Man, you're missing out. These things are so much fun. One of the great things about this is I can just skip between my webcam if I wanna to talk to the audience, for example. We'll go back to the picture-in-picture -picture setup I've got over here. Or we can go back to the intro. And I've got the intro set up so the microphone isn't active, but you can do whatever you like. You can set it up in any number of different configurations. But there it is, 1080p streaming, made easy. Or in my case right now, recording to the desktop.